reading the word with Luther for April 23rd. I'd like to read to you today from Isaiah chapter 55 verse 3 in the Revised Standard Version of the Holy Bible. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast sure love for David. This is the word of God. Luther writes, the prophet has reference to the promise made to David in the seventh chapter of Second Samuel. In the preceding verses of the chapter, Isaiah most tenderly entreats and invites the whole world to receive the promises of salvation. For thereby shall the poor, the wretched, and the afflicted obtain the great treasures of joy and salvation. Immediately following the verse quoted, he speaks of the Messiah, the promised seed of David, as given to the Levites for a witness a preacher sent by God and for a leader and commander to the people. The thought is of a king and ruler differing from Moses and his priest and exponents of the law, a ruler differing from every other lord and king, from David and all worldly rulers whatever, subjecting them everything to himself. Not that this leader should set up a new temporal government or extend Jewish authority among the Gentiles, but that Jews and Gentiles should receive him and believe in him and obtain the fulfillment of that promise he here terms a covenant of the sure mercies of David. This covenant God enters into and keeps, a divine, sure covenant through Christ shall be given whatever blessings God's mercy shall bestow, with remission of sins, redemption from death, and life eternal. Now if the Christ of this covenant is true man, and as the promise to David is of David's flesh and blood, and if he is to bring eternal mercy, he must likewise be God, such gift being in the province and power of God alone. This being true, he cannot remain in death, although he may suffer death by reason of his human nature. He must of his own power rise from the dead. Only so can he raise others and give them everlasting life. Only so can he truly be called eternal king of grace, righteousness, and life according to the sure promise of God. Whenever the scriptures speak of Christ's eternal kingdom and of everlasting grace, they point out this article of the resurrection of Christ. God has promised to give us Christ, him who was to sit at his right hand, that is, to have the omnipotent divine power possible only to an eternal Lord and King, and at the same time to have his kingdom on earth. May you rest your ears. May you incline your ear and hear what the Lord has to say to you. May you know that he has made with you through Jesus Christ an eternal covenant such that he made with his King David that kind of powerful covenant, an everlasting covenant and promise, a contract that he has made with you and will not break. Only believe it. Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, for your promise and that you are good for your word, even when we are not. Give us such grace that we may believe your promise and thereby believe in you and your king. Help us to live in his kingdom now and look forward to it with joy everlasting. Amen. Thank you for being with me today for reading the word with Luther. I hope you'll be with me in worship uh, in just a few days, Sunday, the Lord's Day at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Salisbury, North Carolina. Following this, there'll be a slide come up that tells you the location and the time, and I hope that I'll see you there. And I also hope that you'll be back with me again tomorrow for reading the Word with Luther. Mm -hmm.